So unless you're living under a rock, then by now you know that Donald Trump was banned from Twitter and expectedly he lost his mind um, in a way that uh, nobody is surprised by. But it's just, it's really nice to see. Like, we're reaching the end of his administration, and after all of the pain that he's inflicted on, you know, the United States and the world, it's nice to see some poetic justice. So Politico reports, President Donald Trump has many prized possessions, but few seemed to inspire as much personal joy as his Twitter feed. Trump routinely boasted of the social media bullhorn he possessed. He credited it with launching his political trajectory, and he used it as a tool to lacerate his foes. On Friday night, he lost it, and then he lost his mind. The president is ballistic, a senior administration official said after Twitter permanently took down his account, citing the possibility that it would be used in the final 12 days of Trump's presidency to incite violence. The official said Trump was scrambling to figure out what his options are. So too was much of the political universe, which has become blurry-eyed obsessive about Twitter these past four years as Trump used the medium to fire advisors, sink legislative initiatives, encourage social duress, and lastly, praise the scores of MAGA faithful just days after hundreds of them violently ransacked the Capitol. In a statement issued by the White House, Trump said he'd been negotiating with various other sites while we also look at the possibilities of building out our own platform in the near future, but aides did not reveal what plans were in the works. When Trump's eldest son, Don Jr., offered up a URL to those hoping to keep tabs on his father's whereabouts, it was a site that had been purchased in 2000. 2009, and in recent years, a place where his books were sold. For those who did sign up, an email was sent plugging his latest book, Liberal Privilege. So it's all a grift. Like, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Trump and his family will use whatever situation to try to make money off of it. And it's like, you'd think that Trump supporters would be insulted by this, but they're not smart enough to figure it out, that like these folks are using you, they don't actually care about you or the country. Now, there was uh, an image from Fox News that I got to share it shows all of the websites that Trump was banned from. I mean, this is this is pretty comprehensive. Like, he is not welcome on any platforms. And of course, we had the memes showing that he was banned from Pornhub and OnlyFans. <laughs> I love this. I absolutely love this. Not only do I think it's funny that Trump was banned, I think it's good. Now, I've got to address the folks who are against Trump getting banned because my reaction on Twitter was that this was funny, and of course, you know, I was laughing about it, and I was sharing the memes about it, but some folks, even folks who purport to be on the left, they claim that this is bad. And I've been called a fascist because I'm happy that a fascist was banned from Twitter. Doesn't that make sense? If you are against fascism, you can be a fascist if you support fascist tactics, but that's not the situation. And there were even some folks who were, like, photoshopping images of Donald Trump with, like, duct tape over his mouth with the words censored on it. And if you believe this, you are not a serious person. And I say this because this is not like some ordinary case where some like random MAGA chud was deplatformed. This isn't this isn't a normal situation. We're talking about the president of the United States here. If you incited a riot in the same way that Donald Trump did, do you think that you would be deplatformed off of Twitter? Uh, yeah, I think you would. I think you'd all expect, uh, we'd all expect that. And not only that, we'd be in jail. So the fact that some folks are like angry that Trump is deplatformed and seem to be like going out of their way to like feign outrage, even folks on the left, I find it bizarre, but I don't think it's very many folks on the left. But let me just say, like, if you are one of the folks who believe that uh, because right winger X in this instance, Donald Trump was deplatformed. That'll just lead to more censorship on the left. Like, l let's try to entertain that argument uh, a little bit. But I don't want to dive too deep and go down that rabbit hole because this is not like a unique situation. Usually when it comes to deplatforming, it's a case-by-case -case situation. It depends. But this is not, like, this is a very different and unique circumstance. So the fact that there's any question, even on the left is bizarre to me. So what is freedom of speech? Or as the kids are calling it nowadays, free speech. Uh, well, it is freedom to say what we want without fear of government retribution. It's the first amendment, right? We all we all know this. But in America, we, we kind of like use our sense of American entitlement to apply free uh, speech. <laughs> I 
literally said free speech to apply free speech to like instances where it's not appropriate. So if I am protected from the government prosecuting me for saying something that they don't like, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'll be protected from private corporations. So if I walk into a Costco and I yell racist things or I scream about politics or I act like a fool and they escort me out, that doesn't mean that my First Amendment rights were violated. That doesn't mean that my free speech rights were violated. That means that a private company didn't like what I said while I was on their property. So that's not a First Amendment violation. And I think that even if you expand the principle of free speech to private platforms as well, which some people do, some people don't, it kind of depends. This is still a situation that's very different because even if we accept that, you know, the First Amendment only applies to what the government says and that the government can't prosecute us for speech that we use, there's still limit limits to that as well. Like we can't lie about people. We can't commit libel or slander. We can't yell fire in a crowded elevator. So protected speech, it's pretty absolute in America, but there are some limits. And Trump breached that limit. We are not allowed to incite insurrections. If we did that, we would be jailed. So this isn't about Trump losing his freedom of speech. This isn't freedom of speech. You don't have the freedom of speech in America to incite an insurrection. And that's exactly what he did. That is exactly what he did. See, if I said that uh, there was a fire in a building on this street and somebody called the ambulance or, or the fire department and uh, that wasn't actually a thing, you could say that my speech led to people taking action. And Trump by saying that the election was stolen from him, led to people taking action on his behalf. You could draw a direct line between point A and point B. He incited a riot. That, my friends, is not protected speech. So the fact that Donald Trump repeatedly used his platform on Twitter to stoke the flames, this led to the violent insurrection that we saw last Wednesday. It's a direct result of his actions. So by him getting deplatformed, his freedom of speech was not violated. No, you don't have the freedom of speech to incite literal insurrections, to incite folks to take up arms, stage the capital, and literally stage a coup. We don't have the freedom of speech to do that. The government doesn't give us that right. Privately owned platforms do not allow us to have that right, it's a limit of free speech. So the folks feigning outrage over Donald Trump getting banned, I find it bizarre. Now, individuals will make this case and they'll say, well, look, it's not necessarily about Donald Trump. I, I see you. I hear you, Mike. You know, Trump, he did something bad. Yes. And I can understand why you want to punish Donald Trump individually. But, you know, these things, it turns into a slippery slope because if you punish Donald Trump, then these, these tech oligarchs, they're going to say, well, you know, we got to appear fair. So if we're going to ban Trump, then we've got to ban Bernie Sanders. And, you know, this is just going to facilitate more and more left wing censorship. And, you know, the left, they truly challenge power and institutions in this country. So, you know, they're going to find more reasons to ban us. And to that, I say um, a slippery slope is a logical fallacy. The left is already getting censored and deplatformed at uh, in, in greater numbers than right-wingers. That's already happening. It's a common occurrence. That's a common occurrence that's, that's already happening. And whether or not Trump is banned from Twitter isn't necessarily going to change that. I think it is a legitimate conversation if you want to talk about whether or not big tech has too much power. Yeah, that's true. I, I would agree with you. They do. Uh, I think that whether or not you know, uh, these these companies should be instituting things like deplatforming as a legitimate, uh, you know, uh, measure against bad faith actors on the platform. Sure, I think you can have that conversation. Um, even, you know, about right wingers and when, when they break the TOS on these websites. Sure, you can have that conversation. But this is such a unique case. Like we're talking about the president of the United States and to defend him and say he shouldn't be banned functionally what you're arguing for is a two-tiered system of justice. And we're not talking about like justice in terms of our judicial system. You're basically saying that there should be a different standard for rich people. And as a leftist, that's not a leftist position. You shouldn't be in favor of Trump staying on Twitter because we should treat everyone equally. There should be, you know, the same exact standard that's applied universally. If I incited a riot, I get deplatformed and I expect that. If Trump incites a riot, 
he should be deplatformed as well. You don't get special powers because you're the president. And so to like argue on behalf of Donald Trump to stay on that platform, what you're functionally arguing for, wittingly or unwittingly, is for the president of the United States to have more power than average citizens. Because again, if you incite a riot, you're going to go to jail. If he incites a riot, what? There, there should just be no consequences. So if you don't think Trump should be deplatformed, what should happen as a result of him breaking the law? What should happen? Should he just remain on Twitter and possibly incite more riots? I just don't understand what you want there to happen. And it's funny because, you know, folks, usually these are the same actors, you know, they'll say, well, look, see, Trump was banned and I'm already proven right because now left winger X was banned. And I think it was Red Scare Pod that was banned also. I don't know who they are. I'm not familiar with them. Uh, but here's the thing. Left-wing podcasts and personalities are getting banned all the time. Like you and I, we know people who've been banned on Twitter. This isn't something new. So it, it's weird to me that the only time some folks on Twitter will defend uh, left-wingers and point out them getting deplatformed as bad is to prove why right-wingers shouldn't be deplatformed. They'll say, well, see, Trump was deplatformed. And as a direct result, Red Scare Pod was deplatformed as well. Except... Correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation. And the same folks who use these examples to prop up their argument that deplatforming of right wingers will lead to deplatforming of left wingers, they never actually like speak up on behalf of left wingers when they're deplatformed. Like, how many folks who are against this said anything when the serfs was deplatformed off of YouTube? Thankfully, they got their channel back, but that wasn't the case. How many like free speech? Peach Warriors were, were speaking up on behalf of them. Now, had the serfs been deplatformed when a popular right winger was deplatformed, I think that maybe folks would have talked about that because that could be used as evidence that their argument is correct and the people who are pro censorship are wrong. But I mean, it's it's not that simple. Like, that's not a very persuasive argument. That's an oversimplification. So if you are a leftist, I think that, like, your reaction to this should be pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, did he break the law? Yes. Do you believe that folks who break the law, even if they're popular politicians or powerful politicians or popular people, should they be held to the same standard as peasants? Uh, yeah, then okay, this is fine. So let's laugh about it. It's not a big deal. No need to, you know, uh, die on this hill of a fascist president with a lot of power who incited an insurrection shouldn't be banned. Like, I don't get why folks are making this their number one issue. And if you truly care about censorship, which you should, then there's a left wing way to do this. Like, freaking out every time a fascist is banned isn't necessarily the best thing that a leftist should be doing if they genuinely care about, you know, freedom of speech and the principle of freedom of speech. You can start talking about antitrust and how we break up these big tech oligarchs and monopolies and whatnot and rein in their power, regulate them more, nationalize them possibly. I don't know, but like freaking out, feigning outrage whenever a right winger is deplatformed, that doesn't necessarily seem like the best use of our time, especially considering that the fascists would never speak out on your behalf. The fascists don't believe in freedom of speech. The fascists want to deplatform you, and they would laugh if you were deplatformed as you, you know, defend them. And I know the response will be, well, yeah, but I'm just, I'm just principled. I'm not a hypocrite. Okay, well, great. Then actually find a way to, like, enhance speech in the United States. And, you know, target, you know, these actual big tech companies in a leftist way, not by like defending right wingers and fascists when they're deplatformed. And that's all I'll say about this. I think Trump getting banned is hilarious. And I hope that he is mad. I hope he's stewing over this. Uh, I hope he is uh, miserable that he can't, you know, tweet any longer and, and criticize people and incite insurrections. Good. This should have happened a lot sooner than it did. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>